a well-designed application can also have some system configurations that users can use to change system without asking developers to change the code. In our systems, these can be done by using Psi properties. In this video, let me show you how. So this is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive web application that has an entity called customer and these attributes. So to create uh, the site properties or the configurations, uh, what you will find under data tab is a folder called site properties. This is where you can create additional site properties that later on can be managed from service center. By default, there's only there's already two properties here, tenant ID and tenant name that are used for multi-tenancy, a topic for some other time. But this is where you are able to create additional properties for maybe how the application looks, uh, maybe some integration parameters like username and passwords, API keys, those things can be can be kept here. So later on, the admins of the application can manipulate these properties as uh, the as the need be. In my case, what I will do to show you all of this work is to quickly first create the customer listing and detail screens. That's a simple drag and drop. And what I intend to do is maybe create a property here that allows uh, the admin to set whether they want to see some actions at the end of the list or in the beginning. To make it work, I'm going to add a column here with a dummy icon that mix in case you want to have a edit functionality here. In case you want to go further and add that functionality, just right click on the icon and you should be able to link it to a new action and you can do it. But what I will do is create the properties now. So imagine on my page here for customer listing, I create a property called is action fuss. This is action fuss is a Boolean variable. That's what I put is in front. So platform knows this is going to be a Boolean variable. Now in my case, let me let me modify the screen a little. So it's easier to manage. So as of now we have the table, the empty uh, container and the placeholder for the pagination. I'm going to select all of these items and put them into a container. And then this container I can put into an if. The if is what I'm going to tie to is action first. So the true is action first goes there and the false will be the table there. I'm just doing a copy paste. So for the true branch, let me move the actions into the beginning. So that's a trick using the true and false. The action would be in front. So if is action first, just to recap, if is action first variable has the value as true, we will see this grid. If it's false, we will see the one below. Now later on, what we'll do is manipulate the value, like get the value from our site property, and that goes into is action first. So pay attention to this part now. I switch over to data tab, and I'm going to create a property. I'll use the same na name is action first in grids, something that admins can easily uh, understand. I'm going to set this default value to false. And then later on, we're going to create a server action to read site properties. Do note that site properties are not available on the client side. You must use an action. You must create an action to get the values. So get value for is action first. Once you create one server action, you can use it from multiple screens. That's the value. And this will return us the value of is action first. What goes inside the logic of this server action is pretty straightforward. We want to assign the value to the output variable and the value would be coming in from site. So this is the way you access the value from your site properties. So whatever goes into this will be assigned to my output variable. So when the function is ED, we'll go back to our screen and uh, to get the value of is action first into this variable, what I will trigger is maybe some uh, events on the page level. So there's initialized, ready, render, destroy, there's a page life cycle. Maybe on init, I can call that function, which is something like this. And then assign the value of the output parameter here to my screen variable is action first. Here, I think it should work fine. 
So just to complete the loop, the value will go into this, and this is the field is action first that is tied to my uh, the grid if uh, true or false. So let's go ahead and publish this application to see the outcome. But just to reiterate, this side properties can be used for uh, different things. People use it for storing parameters for integrations like username and password for third party systems. You can use it for some sort of uh, system configurations depending on the use case that you may have at hand and uh, anything else. So I'm going to launch it now. So by default, remember the property has false value. So all the uh, actions like this edit pencil icon is appearing on the extreme right. Now, if I want to manage the value of this, I'll show you that also. So if imagine I'm in the shoes of the administrator who is going to modify the value to bring the functionality, the actions in beginning, he don't have to change or change the code. He can log into the service center and change the value of the site parameter, something like this. So I'm logging in now into my service center. I'm inside the application that was there. And if I go to my site properties, there's where all the site properties will appear. As of now, I only have one that I can manage. You can see by default, the value is false. That's what the developer has set. But I can go in by clicking on it and change the value to true and apply. The moment I apply, the site property becomes effective. And if I go back to my page and give it just a refresh, my actions are in the beginning now, which means the property has been changed to true and that property true was retrieved from the server action and that that para property also became available on the page and then my if and else condition you saw it already now it's going into the true branch thanks for watching